For our next session, I'd like to invite Puan Aida Lim Abdullah, Chairman of Penang Halal International. Hey guys, welcome back to today's session. So I'm Jason Low, and once again, I shall moderate this session. And for this session in Data Asia, I have Puan Aida Lim, the CEO of Penang Halal International. Uh, I've met Puan Aida since uh, the end of last year, and we have been indeed talking and working on various digitalization efforts, and especially running virtual expos for PHI by itself. So let's welcome Puan Aida to today's session. Hi Puan, nice to see you here. Hi, hi. Hi, good day. Hi, nice for inviting me, uh, Jason. And yep. thank you. And it's an honor to participate in your Data Asia's uh, Expo. Hey, thank you, Puan. You have always been supporting all kinds of initiatives that we're doing. And it's good to know that you are always a strong believer in your digitalization efforts, helping SMEs, micro SMEs, you know, implementing all kinds of technology and things like that. So I'm very excited to talk to you about like today's topic like you know through your experience in corporate and now serving the community and business owners uh, how is the digitalization journey for SMEs out there so uh, Puan, throughout your years of doing this kind of activities right what do you feel that the challenges that this kind of SMEs or micro SMEs are actually facing when it comes to digitalizing or implement digital uh, features into their businesses um, okay, uh, actually digitalization is uh, something that is not new to all of us. In fact, I was uh, involved uh, during the capital and financial market times to assist company to develop and grow and especially the marketing and the engagement, communication, surveillance, everything, um, market analysis and all that. So since uh, I would say that 1997 technology uh, already started quite robust and run very fast. But what happened is that certain segment of the SME will go faster than uh, uh, certain uh, uh, others. Okay, so actually uh, technology and uh, uh, digital cannot be uh, 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 to uh, avoided in any businesses at all in SME. So why is it... Uh, uh, digital and technology is so important now, especially after we met, we, we are uh, over uh, this uh, trying period pandemic, especially where engagement, communication and contact has become an issue. And in any businesses, marketing, engagement, communication, um, learning, everything is so important. Now, just take a look at the, the, the landscape in Malaysia how important is SME in our economy? Based on the statistic from SME Corp, as well as a statistic uh, uh, Negara uh, Malaysia, 98.5% of the business establishment in Malaysia fall under the definition of SME, 98.5%. So out of this 98.5%, almost a quarter is mid-tier to bigger SME, medium to small. Now, we are talking about 25%, the rest of the 75% sit under micro, uh, micro enterprises. So when they are small, more so digital is going to be so important and so essential to their survival and growth. Okay, because digital can resolve a lot of, uh, of uh, issue that, uh, you know, to help them to overcome a lot of challenges especially engagement and communication. So just now, one of your issue is that why are, what are the challenges, right? Am I right? The challenges that are facing them. I think uh, these are few of the area that from my experience, engagement with SME and plus myself was directly involved in developing all the SME. I find that this is the part that uh, are, are stopping them, money and resource, okay? So money and resource have been uh, one of their main challenges. Of course, awareness. I think awareness is still slowly picking up, especially after the pandemic. They realize that there is a need of an alternative uh, way or solution, innovative ways to engage people. But the lack of uh, readiness in the past, the lack of uh, inherent, inherent uh, technology expertise, that means 
they only use technology like simple thing for phone call and, and send out emails and all that. Those are not good enough. So they lack that kind of, uh, of skill, but to build that skill and resource and everything, they need money, they need expertise, they need uh, where to start, where to start. So um, looking at uh, SME being the backbone of our economy in 2019, I think, no, sorry, 2020, I think in uh, year 2020, government have actually uh, uh, stepped up and trying to help in terms of uh, uh, giving support and all that and giving in total, I remember this is the number that uh, uh, I remember I came across is that the package prehatin, it may be even more, but this is uh, something that uh, we, we, we collected yeah? uh, nearly about uh, how many million really government actually spent in the prihatin, you know. I think, uh, uh, wait now, nah, I can't, I don't really have the number with me. If I'm not wrong, it's about 100 billion ringgit was allocated to support the SME under the prihatin economic stimulus uh, package. In every in in the whole spectrum, but uh, mostly, I would say that most of the the support somehow direct indirectly linked to digital. Okay, now, Penang Hala International has a very uh, uh, unique experience in 2020, where we deploy and partner with many uh, uh, technology expert uh, to elevate and enable all this SME and it proved to be very effective. Just an example, one of the e-commerce that we, we uh, partner with them to help them to educate, create awareness for micro and smaller as the entrepreneur. Within six months, I think 2020 itself, six months, there were about 15,000 merchants elevated in that program using technology and it it generate about 580 million sales revenue for all of them just by using one single platform. So can you imagine if all of them know how to uh, further uh, elevate that? But the second thing I think very, uh, their challenge is that technology is easy. You can buy something, ask somebody to set up, but how to maintain it and how to upscale it, how to uh, make sure it's up to date and all that. This is what SME's challenges is. The technical side, the resource side, and the knowledge side, and where to go to. Where to go to. So there's a lot of consultants out there. You know, there's no benchmark as to what is the right answer. So they use a trial and error approach. Uh, one of the challenges that SME, key challenges is that the lack of awareness, uh, uh, the lack of uh, understanding uh, of how and where to start and why some of them don't even know the actual, uh, what do you call that, benefit of digital. But of course, pandemic recently teach them some, but I think it's the, beside the, the awareness, uh, is the knowledge you know, knowledge and the resource, where to get the resource, the lack of awareness of these digital things, right? Cause many of them uh, uh, slow in catching up, you know? Um, the digital transformation, before we even talk about digital transformation, the digital stuck and future ready mindset, whether do they have that? That is what I generally observe uh, because when you tell them the first thing they're worried about is a firefighting uh, a situation in most of the SME smaller enterprises and uh, 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 all these uh, micro entrepreneurs is that they are most likely very limited in resources multitasking to the max so when you ask them to do something new something to get ready for the future and something to get ready as competitiveness. Sometimes quite a number of them, they don't have a clue where to start. And that's why people like us 
who have gone through or who have the adequate exposure or who understand some of the jigsaw puzzle are very uh, actually needed in the economy uh, 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 um, situation to help all these SME. Now, uh, do they understand data? Do they understand how to get the data? Do they understand where their market is? And do they know how to communicate to market that they have never reached before? And do they understand what is internet marketing? Do they understand what is called social uh, communication? Do they understand in the internet there is many, many other markets that they may, have, may not even know? They have so many customers that is out there that they have not even gone to that space. So to me, their challenges is the awareness. And then the second is whether they have the time and resource. If they do, no, it's all start with the uh, where where the help, who, who. They need a lot of, uh, uh, of uh, guidance and all that. So uh, also, how do they manage the data? Most of the SME at the moment, the, the only type of thing that they have is a simple laptop and some micro uh, some uh, my, uh, uh, software that's it. So let's uh, not talk about uh, building a website. Some of them don't even know that they need a website because there's a window of communication in the modern uh, 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 business uh, uh, environment. environment. So yeah. why this is yeah why this is important is because if you look at the population now it's year 20, 2021. So in, in pandemic they may have accelerated the, the process a little bit, but the landscape of the of the population generation generation Z or they call Gen Z, you know, is coming into the workforce. And they are part and parcel of the moving economy now. In the, in the global population at this standpoint, based on the state of the Islamic economic report in 2020, the Gen Z is about 32% based on the global population. Why are they so important? Because they are very tech savvy. So the only way to reach out to the future customer and the future market, you can't live without digitalization. You can't live without technology. And what are we talking about the Gen Z spectrum? We are talking about global spending of almost US dollars, 100 billion in estimate, the 30%. So Six out of the 10, based on the research and data from the Islamic Economic Report in year 2020, six out of the 10 purchases made by this 30% of the generation is through mobile phones. Okay, so can you imagine this space is growing very fast? And in Europe, Middle East, Africa population, Gen Z in the economy is about 17, 18%, and it's still growing. So uh, how does Gen Z search for information? Why digital is so important for SME and whoever who do businesses? Because Gen Z, I'm focusing on the younger generation, the 30%, the 100 billion uh, spending people, 47 to 50% of them they are, they are, they are where, where to go to for information is on the internet search engine, either via mobile phone or uh, their, their internet access. Huh? And almost 50% of them are in social networks in the digital space. And they read consumer reviews. Every time when they buy something, they leave a reviews and all that. That's then about 30, 30 to 35%. So if anyone who are in business, whether they are SME, micro or whatever, say that, never mind, they take some time to study, I don't think time is waiting for them because things are moving every second, every day. Uh, so if the, 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 they are still standing in the quadrant of the zero awareness, it's very important for them to quickly, if they can't learn it themselves, their team need to learn. If not, there's always other alternative, but we will come to that uh, 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 segment later uh, as we go along in our conversation. There are solutions to all the challenges.
Right, yeah? right. Uh, mm. Whenever there's a challenges, there's always a solution. It depends on how <laughs> we tackle it, whether the cup is half empty or the cup is half full. Right. right. So I would like to extend one of the earlier points which uh, Bon mentioned, right? You're talking about uh, most of the time they are in the dark, they do not have the knowledge, you know, and we do see the government giving all kinds of initiatives like you mentioned, the Priyatin, the digitalization grant initiatives and things like that. Uh, do you feel that um, this collaboration between the government and also of course the private corporations, right, the solution providers, are actually doing uh, whatever they can already to reach out to all of these uh, SMEs and micro entrepreneurs on what's going on or do you feel that most of the time it is still very uh, segmented towards very city based areas if you're talking about uh, states beyond KL you still have businesses who haven't gained the necessary awareness towards all of these efforts and importance of digitalization is the media also promoting these kind of uh, strategies enough that will allow this kind of knowledge to be shared among businesses all over Malaysia I think everybody is trying to help each other at this moment. That there, there is a, a good feel about that. Government is trying to help, private sector is trying to help. But my issue is that I feel that there's still some gaps here and there in the entire ecosystem. The gaps lies with where? The people who, who doesn't know what they want and where to start, they will simply, okay, uh, they, each of them have their own definition of digital and technology. Mm. So there are a lot of people who aspire to provide solution and they think they know, but they didn't listen carefully and they don't understand. So this is where the gap is. The people who are looking for it, they do not know and do not understand and they cannot imagine beyond what else can be done. So when they cannot communicate their one to the uh, uh, service provider or the advisor and all that, they may not capture it correctly. Just like I give you a simple example and analogy. If a patient go and see doctor, they only keep focusing on telling the doctor, hey, I, oh, I got shoulder pain, shoulder pain. Norm normally, the doctor who diagnosed will say, oh, based on what the patient said, it's shoulder pain. Give him Panadol. So there may be miscommunication in that. Maybe there are more. It depends on the skill of the doctor to, to, to get the information up, then to diagnose and to get this uh, root cause and then to build from that root cause to elevate the health. Same thing in business is like that. When I keep telling people I have no money, I have no money, but what is the what is that that causing the no money? Is it because your marketing no good or your internal system is not efficient or your internal system is fragmented in pieces that is not? So whoever give advice have to listen carefully, you know? Uh, I still want to believe in uh, the good uh, initiative that everybody wants to help, but whether you are helping correctly or SME just take the prahatin or whatever uh, support that they have, they use it in the wrong place. Is it because they don't have a market? That means they didn't do a good analysis of their business environment and how their internal strength and weaknesses can capitalize on the environment. And then digital or solution is just a tool. They need to align their strategy using the right tools and like right solution. I think that is a gap and it's still very, uh, to me, it's quite obvious and prominent because we are people who came from many sectors and have experience. Sometimes they over invest into area whereby it's not their pain point. So first of all, they have to understand where is their pain point and then what strategy they need. Of course, pain point, uh, some of them, um, you, it depends on a good entrepreneur who know how to express it, who is observant enough to understand the detail and list it down. Then only you can derive the right type of digitalization. You know, um, just like people tell you, paracetamol is good for headache, but it cannot be treated for any other thing. It, uh, no, it cannot be used for beyond pain. It's a pain uh, a management uh, medicine. But if the root cause of the pain is something else, you have to treat the root cause. Like, for example, for digitalization, most of the time I find that SME is that they want to export or they want the market. But they forgot that 
whether their product is wanted or needed in the market that they are looking into. So all these people who, who will tell them, is it this kind of situation, what kind of uh, solution, I'm just giving an example, what kind of solution or digital technology will help them is first of all, to do a analytic onto that market they are entering into. Then with that simple analytic, they have to map across what the strength of this company, can they address those uh, 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 and the, the analytic report that is coming out the outcome. So what sort of outcome they want to, want to start. So when they understand this kind of proper uh, analysis right now, for example, I want to enter into market X because that market X have, uh, uh, say, it's a small island. They don't have a, a parking. Uh, they, they have a lot of parking issue. So what, what is in my company that can address that? First of all, they, they do a proper uh, 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 analytic using digital, maybe how many of the people that own car and how many of the, uh, how, how good is the public transport? Something like that. I'm just giving some example. So me being an SME, uh, maybe I supply uh, spare parts for the vehicle. So how can I help this kind of market? Definitely you can if the public transport is bad. So people need to own car, right? So when people need to own car, that's where you come in. But how do you go about to the next step? What kind of digital that you need to do? You need to do a survey, right? Instead of you go one by one, you use you use a digital solution, do a survey. And then what kind of cost and uh, purchasing power? So this kind of thing is uh, very analytic and more, uh, what do you call that? Awareness and learning process. So before right. we talk about digitalization, we must know what we want. Yes. Okay. Agreed. So, so this is our, my view that yeah, you I must mean, know what you want before before the solution provider can even help. But solution mm -hmm. provider cannot keep promoting something without knowing what they want. Correct. Or what is their actual situation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this this uh, this analogy was very similar with uh, another company owner that I interviewed just 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 yesterday. Actually, they talked about how a lot of solution providers are not listening to the real problems and issues that this kind of traditional SMEs really want. And they just, what we call like, uh, do whatever they think is best without even knowing whether their solution can even solve the, the, the core root issues that these companies are facing, right? Uh, interesting analogies on how you actually compare digitalization with also like medical related procedures, right? Like how the doctor is just trying to treat something very on a surface level, but it's not, all the way to what the core root of the issues are, right? So yeah, those are indeed uh, very great tips that uh, you shared earlier on. Uh, and I hope that you know, businesses and traditional SMEs can actually learn and have some kind of light bulb moments through these kind of conversations. Yeah, Mo so moving okay, forward. I, one, yep. uh, uh, before that, I just, another thing that this, this is just uh, uh, a light moment. Once I spoke to a, a solution provider and I mm. like what he, 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 he shared with me, which a, a technology digital solution provider. Some of them oversold, under deliver. Oversold, oversold yeah. under deliver means they, they, they quoted they can do this and that, the solution can do this and that. But come to reality, this is year 2021. Okay. So this guy, I, I really respect, he really is uh, because I used to be in fintech, I used mm. to be in solution, I used to be in right. many things that trying to provide this. So he mentioned something which is very true to the, all, the, all of us in the room. Uh, dear sir and madam, uh, in 20, now we are in this era, our technology, whether we like it or not, can only solve, everybody will look for these three solutions. Generally, yeah? cheap, mm. good, cheap, good, and uh, fast. Okay, out of these three categories, it would be good that you can have all the three cheap, yep. good, and fast. And but fast. reality and the technology capability can only allow you to choose any of the two. There's no all of the above. Mm. So if you want to cheap, uh, you, if you cannot afford, like most of the SME, you have to, your first tick is cheap. Then the next mm -hmm. tick, you want fast or good. So a lot of them choose fast. 
So they cannot complain that the, the system cannot be scalable <laughs> because you want fast, right? So, okay, yeah, I want yeah. to choose cheap. Then I want it to be good. Then the system may be a bit slow. Right, right. That, that's what, what he said. So reality is take things where the environment and capability is able to. So the expectation have to be managed properly. Right, right. So mm. that is a, that's a takeaway for this, your question. My, my, my suggestion is that your expectation have to be realistic. Expectations. And yep, correct, right. So as the digital provider, they also have to be realistic in terms of don't over promise, mm. under deliver. Yep. So when there is a disappointment in the in the in the business side, then they will lose confidence. All these uh, is uh, uh, it won't help one. It's just wasting money. But it may be because of either the communication gap, the misunderstanding, or the expectation was not managed. Right from the right. beginning. Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Indeed, through my years of uh, you know uh, doing these kind of dig digitalization efforts with various clients, uh, expectations is always key because they they like to read on an article on the news somewhere and talk about how successful certain implementations is, and then the SMEs will have different kind of expectations already. Oh, just like that, download the software can use, but in reality, yeah. if you're talking about changing business processes it's a lengthy process a lot of culture change uh, sop change has to be uh, has to be met with expectations and whether these kind of solutions can even fit into the entire operational process right it's a totally different thing so yeah that is indeed a good uh, triangle three pointer thing to look at that not everything can be achieved on any type of integration and uh, certain expectations have to be kept in check before we decide and embark on this digital transformation journey, right? So yeah. moving on, um, it's been a very hot topic recently across like, uh, especially in Malaysia, because we are an Islamic-based country with various type of Islamic economy inside. What's your take on the trends of Islamic digital economy and how is Penang Hala International trying to be like a part of this wave moving forward? For the Islamic uh, digital, right? Okay. Actually, uh, the entire, uh, this is my, my, my view in terms of HALA digital economy. Th these are the very important key components. Okay. Uh, I would say that uh, 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 integration, that means shared data, whether horizontal or, or vertical, right? From point to, uh, one point to another. So, so this entire uh, Islamic, uh, what do you call that, halal digital economy, from my own perspective, I cut it down to seven functional components to be incorporated and they are interlocking. You know, they have in, in, independency to each other. The issue, the problem is that uh, all these components are being taken out. This one say, oh, this is mine. This one is, there is no consolidated in the, these are the, uh, what we call that seven functional components, which I identified from, from my experience and observation and my work. I came up with this, the e-documentation is very important. When you talk about trade, now I'm focusing on the HALA digital for trade and economy. E-documentation cut across, whether it's trade, legal, transport, tax, whatever, the documentation is one of the components need to be mm. built. The processes, the digitalized mm. processes, the SOP, the standards, the approval, the certification, all these, all these are interlocking the seven components that I'm talking about. And then tracing right. and tracing and visibility, that means the accountability and the integrity part. That means from the birth of the raw material all the way to the finished good the traceability for to to for the uh, what we call that the trust and integrity in the whole hala ecosystem mm. now another one is competency that means along this whole ecosystem whoever who are involved in it must have certain level of competency and knowledge you know it cannot be because it uh, they are in there to make some quick money or quick opportunity it won't work that way now another very important uh, component in this hala digital economy is the uh, cargo and warehouse, the security, okay? That means uh, that you have a hala a cargo warehouse whereby you ensure all the hygiene, the compliance, sharia, everything is being applied. So 
So all these require, again, a technology and a digital solution for tracking, monitoring, and surveillance. Now, another part is the, the uh, just now in the beginning I mentioned is the integration of the data. Now, and all these one, two, three, four, five, six must house under this very important thing called international monitoring platform, whereby this international monitoring platform, I'm saying something on my own visualization uh, in terms of HALA mm -hmm. digital economy. Yeah. This international monitoring involves the authorities, the governance, the technology, the finance, the insurance, the approval letter, the clearance process, everything mm -hmm. to house just now the six components. And in this part, we are talking about Islamic digital economy, of course, the payment, you know, the, the fintech we are talking about, the in fact that they are with one of the authority, I was proposing some uh, uh, crypto, trade crypto, mm -hmm. you know, why the trade crypto is so essential in this thing is that because not only for Hala uh, uh, digital economy, but also for generally all economy, we are subject to a lot of all these international trade policy and foreign currency exchange. And in business, these are very volatile risks and it can affect a lot of decision making. It can a lot, uh, affect a lot of other outcome and impact. So imagine if you know about digital uh, currency or digital uh, crypto or whatever, it is the latest technology and a lot mm. of them use it for trade, for investment and all that. Nobody uh, so far has seriously or authority uh, take it as it to enable international trade to move in the, in the fastest, uh, most efficient way. Why? Uh, because it will help to eliminate the currency risk. It will help just now the six component I'm talking about, the traceability, visibility, the compliance with the Sharia, the AMLA, whatever, and the standard SOP all will be resolved by itself because the risk will be reduced. Currently, how the trade work is that when they need something, they either issue conventional LCBA or whatever, and they book a currency to hedge the, uh, the situation. But mm. imagine if digital platform or Hala Digital allow that all these compliances are being addressed and they created this platform, all they need is using a digital platform, purchase something, they transact a certain type of uh, medium, or maybe we call it a halal digital currency or whatever, in that platform, they will solve a lot of things. Right. Yeah. Right. So it will take many, uh, when I talk about all this, this is the broad concept. When this, mm. uh, whatever seven uh, Islamic concept component, functionable component linked together, the mm. broad concept will be addressed. Risk management right. will be addressed. Efficiency standardization will be addressed transparency, governance and control will be addressed. So now the seven can overcome these three plus the risk management, which just now I just explained, mm. all this will become a very effective digital economy, whether it's halal or for the traditional conventional, it applies the same. Oh, this, in this, okay, uh, I, can, I can explain like this because <laughs> I was a capital market financial market governance uh, 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 person, I take yep, yep. strong passion in this area. So mm. I'm combining all that I learned for 30 years, three decades, including FinTech and whatever I learned in the compliance Sharia, Halal and all that. Mm -hmm. And I make it into an easy to understand way yep. of explaining Halal Islamic digital economy. Right, right. Yep. Um, these are indeed uh, is not just issues, uh, information that we don't generally get freely outside right so when people like to talk about yes. uh, you know, islamic digital economy things like that they might talk very high level things and it's interesting to hear how you actually broke them down into these kind of you know actionable components and how if one day we are able to integrate everything together then only we can see like the true uh, advantages of running this whole digital economy uh, systematically and whatnot right so hey thanks for another for that sharing so let's move on to the final question uh, before we end our session for today is that you know with the pandemic happening and everything uh, what kind of opportunities do you see SME 
will go to or grow in terms of trying to utilize digitalization in their businesses, uh, knowingly that you know MCO 3.0 has just happened, and we might even face an imminent full full blown lockdown very soon probably by the government. Uh, do you still see SMEs have the chance to really you know accelerate their digitalization process and uh, obtain various opportunities even you know post pandemic and beyond? Okay. I would think uh, actually pandemic, some may uh, uh, rise with it. Many industry may rise with it, especially digital. It's definitely because digital and uh, uh, technology is where the little uh, connectivity that will help to resolve just now the uh, back into where we started, the communication and engagement and market places. Now, and uh, for Islamic economy, this is from the uh, uh, Islamic finance asset. We are looking at US dollar snapshot of the global market, how big this halal market is. We are looking at 2024, now it's 2021. We are looking at estimate. This one is estimated by the uh, one of the research report done by the Hexa Research. Huh? Uh, we are looking at US dollars 12.14 trillion size by 2024. So we are looking at that size, US dollars uh, uh, 12.14 trillion global market is very, very big. So mm. Islamic asset, finance asset is very big, but the one that is leading is halal food. So with pandemic, whether this uh, digital will continue to stay, I think it already started to right. grow and it will definitely stay whether pandemic is here or not. It will have to because why? As just now I brought back, the new generation are very tech savvy. Yep. Okay. And they, they lock their life with digital and technology is part and parcel. As they grow, this innovative uh, space will continue to develop and innovate into other things. So a lot of businesses, uh, to me, although they may face uh, challenges, but there are other solutions. Remember, uh, I, I say that when there is a challenge, there are solutions. Many yep. ways that they can, they, can, they can do it. And uh, digital and technology is one of the tools that will get them future fit not future ready, future, future fit. fit. They have to be ready now. <laughs> yep. They are going to be future fit for the new generation of consumer and business people who are coming into the market. The 30% of the Z, Gen Z, and then we are talking about after Gen Z, the new generation will start coming mm. in. So those days, the those days, people maybe 24, 25, only can start to become a student in business. Today, 15 years old, they can construct business <laughs> using this. That's how yeah. relevant it is into our daily life. So how all these SME can uh, overcome this and accelerate the, the growth? There are many ways. One of the, the things that I keep telling SME is that collaborate. Mm. You can't build everything yourself with that speed. If you, if you run to, to build big, you need to collaborate, you need teams, whether you build internally or externally collaborate. Now, another thing is that those, uh, this is one of the things we learned, I'm quoting an example using amazon.com as compared yeah. to borders. When these two companies started, these two are also into technology. Why Amazon stay and become stronger? Amazon yeah. keep buying what is necessary to build the entire ecosystem. Borders, they buy bit and pieces. Today, the border exists? No. And why uh, Amazon's uh, 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 strategy work? Because collaboration, M&A. Anything that is aligned or within their ecosystem, if they have the money, they conserve the money. They didn't pay dividend for many years when they started. They keep buying M&A. They built the, the, the network and the system to stabilize. Now, another way for certain businesses, maybe you, they do not want to go in that kind of model. Another solution is that outsource. They don't have to, what do you call that, reinvent the wheel. There are many wheels outside. So choose one of those that you can trust. But you don't want to be 
uh, uh, some people say if you want to drink milk, you don't buy cow. So you outsource to the experts to do it for you. That's another solution. That's why I told SME. If your marketing is your challenge, you can outsource to people who really know their stuff and get the, the framework right, ask them to do it. Of course, a lot of them are worried. That's why Penang Hala International also engage with people who are in IP, uh, advisory, IP, uh, legal, and then collaborative agreement to help all these SME. Right. We know when there is a challenge, there's always a solution. Another yeah. one that I find that uh, businesses is that there is always risk in everything we do. Mm. Calculate the risk, you must try it because there's no point keep constructing and then you know uh, what, uh, design and think, think, think. You must get the thing out into the market and see how it's a response, pass, fail or whatever. Then you come back and reinvent. Many technology company or SME, uh, not necessarily as, uh, technology, any SME, they are successful because they are fast to the market. You know why? People always remember the first one, just mm. like WhatsApp, right? Yep. The system, people, once they get the hang of it they will always go there just like amazon if i now i try to create another one replica is quite hard unless you innovate even better than theirs mm. you know yeah. so another thing is that sme th there's no more classroom learning you have to go into the pool and learn at least if you cannot swim you just put half of your leg in to see how it feels the moment mm. you get the feel then you can understand and visualize the journey better and then you can understand your own internal strategy much better than what the expert is telling you expert is coming in to support and assist you but they cannot mm. feel what you feel yep. you know the people in the game require another guy outside to look at them and tell them mm. hey actually this this corner is a bit wrong this kind yep, of yep, analogy yep. Mm, yeah. True. So there's also a way solution. All right. Great one. Hey, thank you so much for you know elaborating so much points regarding our topics today. Uh, we have actually come to the end of the session. So I would like to uh, again thank you for your time, Paranella, for joining us today, and to also like you know elaborate in so much detail of the steps, of the tapes, challenges that SMEs are facing, and how hopefully. Um, Malaysia as a country is able to continue to survive and thrive in this current pandemic and so on. So once again, uh, I'm Jason Lo. Uh, we've come to the end of this session and I'd like to thank Puan and ask the audience to stay tuned for the next session. Thanks Puan. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank Bye -bye. you.